What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing you another Rad Movie Review. Today we're going to talk about the first Insidious film from 2010. Yes, I got a chance to check out Insidious Red Door and I actually thought it would be fun to just breeze through the whole franchise and talk about them. It's actually been a minute since I've seen some of the other films, so I'm going to talk about, like I said, reviewing on the channel all the films. I watched Insidious, Insidious Chapter 2, and The Red Door, and I still got to go back to some of the other ones and re-review them and stuff, because this is, I've never done them on the channel, like, you know what I mean, re-watch them, my bad, not re-review, re-watch them, because I've never done them on the channel, so this is going to be a first, and this is, I think, the third time, yeah, the third time that I've actually watched Insidious, so today you're going to hear my positives, the negatives, the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. So Insidious came out in 2010. This is directed by James Wan and written by Lee Wanell. And man, this is one of those films that kind of kicked off the whole like jump scary kind of you know ghost genre again the conjuring and insidious were probably like the two main factors and really kicking up that genre again and bringing it back to life you know the spiritual hauntings and all that kind of stuff and for me this is actually one of those films though that i'm definitely in the minority is i think this film is a little bit overrated no i don't think this film is a bad film that's not to say it's bad it's just a film that i think it's the the hype that it gets i don't really think it deserves that hype because for me this is a film that i just feel is kind of very flat very bland and i don't really think it gets that entertaining until a certain moment but let's talk about the positives and stuff first before we start diving into just negatives one key positive is I think the music and the sound design works very well for this film. That's one thing that I think they nailed right off the bat is that the sound design, the sound mixing, and like I said, the score and the music for this film, it's there. They definitely, James Wan and Lee Wanell were trying to build an atmosphere with this film and you can see that attempt in it because there's a very much like trying to mold that aspect. Also, we have Lynn Shay in here and Rose Byrne and I think them two are by far the best actors in this film and you can tell like I think Patrick Wilson's okay we'll talk more about that when we get to mix the negatives but for me it's yeah Lin Shay and Rose Byrne are mainly the standouts in here so also Lee Wanell and um, the other member of Lin Shay's crew I forget his name but them too when they when they step in I'm totally into that that's a huge positive for me is that is when that when it comes to that aspect of the film and we get to the later part when Lin Shay brings her crew and they kind of start revealing some things and you're getting into the further and they start talking about the story and more in-depth stuff about the demon that's haunting them that is more up my alley and that's when I'm kind of hooked into the film at that point another positive for this film is this actually the film does have quite a few uh, creepy moments and jump scare moments that actually work and I know it can get kind of tiresome this was before the jump scare thing was really worn out and people got tired of it so at this point it's still works in the film in this one because it kind of was like I said the originator for some of the scenes and some of the stuff that happens in this film so there are definitely some creepy moments the story is very interesting and creative and stuff but now let's kind of get into the mix and negatives because like I said I fall into the camp of people who think this film is kind of overrated for me you know insidious and main reason is that I think the first 20 minutes this is always one of those films, this is like I said, the third time I've watched this film and I get that vibe every time I watch this film, is this is one of those movies that I want to kind of fast forward the first 25 minutes and just get to like the middle of the, you know, the beginning of the second act. Like I kind of want to skip all the setup. I think the setup in this film is very flat, very boring. Like the first 25 minutes, I'm just not, I'm not hooked in the film. So this is one of those movies that it takes a, a while for me to get involved in the story and that's why it's like yeah it's one of those movies where I feel like I actually do kind of want to fast forward the first 25 minutes just so I can get to the more meaty part of the movie. Another thing with this film is I think the color design and the color palette is very bland very flat and that's another thing that that's just my main word to describe this film is flat in terms of that I think the color design some of the characters like Patrick Wilson I think he I usually like him. I like him in Watchmen. I love him in The Conjuring. But I think in this film, he kind of phones it in. Like, I really think his character is just very, like, just there. Like, Patrick Wilson feels like he's just there. He's not really trying to act, which is kind of funny because they have that scene where Rose Byrne's, like, sitting on the stairs, like, talking to her husband, and she looks up at him, and she's like, 
you're never, I don't feel like you're home. You're never there. And he's like, well, I'm here. But she's like, I don't feel like you're fit, you're mentally here. And that's literally what I feel like when I'm watching this movie. I kind of feel like Patrick Wilson is just walking through this movie, just like reacting to everybody else's really good acting. And then the son, you can't really knock the child actor for too much or anything because he got the Laurie Strode syndrome thing from Halloween 2. He's pretty much bedridden throughout this whole entire film. And another thing is the baby and the other son, they basically become non-existent in that third act. They just vanish. And I know they're really going into the further and they're trying to find the other son and they're going through the seance stuff and you're just spending time with them. But it's just, you don't really get any explanation to like where they're at. Like even his mom comes back to talk about his past when you learn more about Patrick Wilson and how there's an entity that was following him as a child. And it's like, where are the other children? Like for real, like it's just, that's one thing that I don't like either is that this film has all these little plot holes that happen and people just overlook it just because I think they're like infatuated with the fact that, oh my God, this was, this was with the conjuring and sinister and they started this whole new resurgence of ghost stories and stuff but i think in terms of my opinion from my perspective the conjuring is a much more superior film to this movie so as you can tell returning to the insidious film this one the first film it just it didn't really change my views on it or anything i know i've never really talked about this one on the channel before but really because insidious is a franchise that i don't return to often these are those kind of movies that i rewatch every three or four years you know what i mean kind of thing it's not like halloween or hellraiser or friday the 13th where those films i watch every year like i try to find time to watch those franchise films every year and insidious is like one of those ones that it's like every three every four years and every time i watch them i, I remember why i wait so long to rewatch these films so yeah i know i'm in the minority kind of with this film because a lot of people really do love this film and i'm not knocking this movie like i said i don't think this is an awful movie or a terrible movie it's just a movie for me that's just very bland and it's not it's not up my alley and like I said for me it's one that I think has a very weak setup and a beginning and characters that I'm not really invested in until you introduce Lynn Shay's character and then you know spoiler alert this film's from 2010 though but then when you decide to you know kill off her character in the third act in the last moments of the film with Patrick Wilson when he becomes possessed by that entity yeah, it just like, it completely leaves a, like a foul, you know, stench, tail, a taste in your mouth, you know, just a foul taste in your mouth that you don't like. So that's what, I was another thing too, is that the ending scene, just that last third act moment, it just leaves you kind of like, ah, really? Like this is, ah. so let's get down to a rating and talk about that. So Insidious, in terms of my rating from my book, Insidious is going to get a six out of 10. It's still an above average film. It's mainly because I can see the creativity between James Wan and Lee Wanell. You can really see they're like trying to make something with atmosphere, really trying to create this jump scare scenario. And I like the story that they built around it, but it's more some of the execution, you know, the color palette, some of the acting in the film I think is very weak. And I think the first 20 minutes is just very, very, you know, a slog to get through for me. So that's why this has never been a film that I grabbed onto that I was like, hooked on to like a lot of other people but this is just my thoughts and my opinions on insidious that means i would love to hear from all of you down below in the comments share your thoughts on this film is this a franchise that you return to often is this one of your favorite horror franchises because we're all different we all have different opinions that's some of the best things about us and be sure you're like subscribed and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime i post a video so you're on this journey with me as we continue the scooby-doo review series talking about that but like i said also going through these insidious films because i just wanted to take time you know and actually discuss the franchise maybe when i get to insidious chapter three i'm gonna find a new love for that one or something because i still got to watch that one so be sure you're like, like I said, and subscribe. That greatly helps out the channel. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.